Should you do extra work? Everyone, I'm Matthew Cornwell with Get Taped here in Atlanta, Georgia, one of Atlanta's original audition taping services, which I co-own with my amazingly talented, beautiful wife, Brooke. Do you like my trilled R there? Anyway, on to our topic. Should you do extra work? Now, most actors, especially in smaller markets, will do extra or background work at some point in their careers. So let me start this video by celebrating the virtues of it. First of all, if you're at the beginning of your career, there's a good chance you've never been on a full budget professional set. And if that's true, well, let me just say that the first time you set foot on a full budget Hollywood set, it can be intimidating. There's a lot of stuff going on and you don't know what's happening. So background work or extra work can be a nice way to learn the ins and outs of how a set works without the pressure of having a speaking role. It can also be a great environment to meet other aspiring actors or make some new friends or just learn from the people around you who know more than you. Furthermore, there's no barrier for entry. You just submit a photo and depending on the needs of the production, you get picked. No audition, no callback, nothing. And you also don't need any acting experience can help if you do. For instance, if you're in a scene where you're close to the main actors and so they're asking you to react normally, yeah, your training will help you there. But in general, it is not required to have any acting training to be a background actor. And this is where I'll segue into how background work or extra work is looked at from other sides of the industry. Because there is no experience or training required, background work is not considered acting. That sounds kind of mean, but it's, it's not meant to be pejorative. To say it differently, you would not put background work on an acting resume. An acting resume is meant to showcase the work you've earned based on your skill and training. So doing copious amounts of extra work does not make you look attractive to an agent, for instance. But if you don't have the goal to acquire an agent, or if you have no desire to be a professional actor the rest of your life, then no harm, no foul. Do as much extra work as you want, and you can stop watching this video. Because depending on the market you live in, you can actually make a fairly decent living on just extra work. But if you're looking at extra work as a stepping stone for your professional acting career, then keep watching for the nuances of when and if you should do it. One nuance to consider is that if you live in a right-to-work state like Georgia or most other southeastern states in the U.S., extra work is not covered by SAG-AFTRA for TV and film. It is for commercials, but I'll get to that in a second. And what does this mean? Well, let's just put it in dollar signs. If you are doing extra work in a right-to-work state on a TV or a film set, then you're likely to make $80 a day, maybe less, and certainly less if it's a non-union production. Now, if you're working here in Georgia on a union commercial as an extra, the good news is the first 25 extras they hire have to be at the union rate. And for the most current rates, please visit the SAG after website. But after that, they can hire all subsequent extras at a much lower rate. So if you're a union actor and you're really close to making insurance this quarter, doing extra work on a union commercial can be a great way to bump your earnings up over that threshold. Especially if that commercial shoots on a weekend, pay bump, goes into overtime, another pay bump, or has violations that they have to pay for. For reference, I remember doing a union golf commercial about 15 years ago, and it was really far outside of town, and it was at the union extra rate, which was, I don't know, maybe 200 and something at the time for the one day. But after lots of overtime, uh, them paying for travel, and they had to pay a violation for a late payment, my check was over $800. Not bad for a day's work. So in short, extra work for commercials can pay really well if it's union. Oh, and before you ask, extras do not get residuals ever. TV, film, commercials, what have you. So now let's shift gears to episodic television. And this is where I'll caution you against doing extra work if you're also pursuing a professional acting career. And this is the reason. If you work as an extra on a television show, there's a really good chance you won't be allowed to book work as a principal, i.e. a speaking role, on that same show. Now there's a chance that if you did background work in season one, that by season four, the slate is wiped clean and they'd allow you to audition for a speaking role. But on more than one occasion, I've had an actor come in to get taped who is currently working background on a television show, but also has a script in hand for a role, a speaking role, that they're auditioning for on the same show a couple episodes out. And you can bet they did not book that role because they're established in the world. And they're also at the front of mind of production. And so they're not going to let the person who they hire on a, on a weekly basis to be in the background of different shots to suddenly appear somewhere else as a speaking role. It's a liability that's just not worth it. 
So just be aware of that if you're doing consistent background work on a television show. Now you could hope to get bumped up to a principal role while working as a background actor on a television show, but that is rare. So please don't expect to get bumped. Sometimes getting bumped can be used as a manipulation to get you to accept the extra gig to begin with, and that's just disrespectful. It just doesn't happen that often, especially in TV and film. In commercials, the bump happens a lot more often, but beware that if they end up cutting your footage from the final edit, you won't get paid as a principal on the back end. In other words, they bump you on set in theory, but from a contractual standpoint, they don't have to pay you a dime more until they look at that final edit and realize that, oh, we did keep their line of dialogue in there, or, oh, they do stand next to the product for more than X number of seconds. So now, retroactively, we do have to bump them to a principal role. It can all get very confusing. Bottom line, don't expect to get bumped. And the last topic I wanna to cover is how extras are treated on set. If you're new to the industry and you work as background on your first set, you may not notice how poorly the extras are being treated, but once you book that speaking role, you will notice the stark contrast. I can't tell you how many times I've arrived on set for a principal role, i.e. a speaking role, and the first, or sometimes more than first, crew member that sees me treats me as an extra in one particular way. And then once I clarify that, oh, no, no, I'm cast, or oh, no, no, no I'm playing so-and-so, their attitude changes night and day. Suddenly, I'm treated like royalty. And while it feels nice to be treated like royalty, it really reflects on how poorly they were treating the extras. And for context, a lot of the time, if they're treating the actors that way, it's because they have a lot of extras on set. And to corral those extras to wardrobe and hair and makeup and to keep them all in one place and to handle mealtime appropriately, and sometimes the extras aren't professional or they're not punctual or they're just not in a good mood, the PAs in charge of the extras can develop short fuses. I'm not excusing that behavior, but I do understand why it happens. So to sum up, background work can be highly educational to someone who is new to the industry. You'll quickly find out that it's not glamorous, especially if you end up as a stadium fan in some sort of big arena scene where there's 300 extras and you're a thousand feet away from the nearest camera. If you want to segue into speaking roles eventually, then you need good training. And if you have great training, then it's time to get a respectable agent. Now, during that journey, it's okay to occasionally continue to do extra work if you enjoy it. But at some point, you may want to close that chapter as you start to get traction in your acting career. That said, the one aforementioned exception is doing union commercial extra work as a means for getting insurance or just paying the bills. Let me close by saying that whatever you choose to do, just remember this industry is very complex, so always assume a posture of learning. Every time I'm on set, I learn something new about this business. Heck, every week I get taped, I learn something new about this business. And I've been doing it for over 20 years. The quicker you absorb the nuances of how everything works in this industry, the quicker you'll see progress in your own career. As always, leave a comment below or email us if you want to continue the discussion. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on set.